So I played a few visual novels before that have really good drama and romance. Uh, some examples of course are If My Heart Had Wings, Doki Ose, and of course A Sky Full of Stars. But uh, there are some that don't really have great executed drama. Of course, main example, Hatsukoi. But let's take a look at a visual novel that has both a well executed mix of both drama and romance that is done spectacularly. So, let's take a look at that visual novel. This is Princess Evon Hill. Released in July 29, 2011, exclusively in Japan and on the PC, this is Princess Evangel, a slice of life romantic drama visual novel that was developed and published by Moonstone. So, there does exist a physical PC copy for Princess Evangel. Unfortunately, I don't have it. So, we're going to take a look at the manga gaming version. You can get this game on Manga Gamer and as well as Steam for the all ages version. Although you can get the 18 plus patch for the Steam version as well. <laughs> so, without further ado, let's take a look at Princess Ivan Gil. You are Masaya, a young man whose life has turned into shambles after his no good father decided to abandon him and leave him with a large debt to a local game called the Goons. One day, he soon encounters a girl named Rise, and after saving her, she tells you that she's enrolled in an all girl school called Vincennes. Before she leaves, she asks Masaya one question. Would you consider enrolling in Vincennes? The reason as to why Rise wants Masaya to enroll at the school is due to the fact that Vincennes is losing a lot of money and support and may close down. And Rise believes the only way to save the school is to integrate gender integration. Make the school available for both genders. Soon he is enrolled at the school and tries to fit in with the rest of the girls. He later joins Rise in becoming a part of the White Lilies to support gender integration. Soon, he later meets the rest of the heroines. Of course you got Rise, but you also got childhood friend Chiho, leader of the rival group the Red Roses, and first year student Ritsuko, and Ritsuko's older sister Ayaka. As the days continue on, it will only get harder for Masaya as he tries to fight both the rival gang the Red Roses and the stubborn headmistress into getting them to accept gender integration. And once he falls in love with one of the heroines, the story will get very interesting, as well as dramatic. This is such a fascinating story to be honest. Sure, we've seen these types of stories before, you know, a young man enrolling in an all-girls school due to a mistake by their parents or something comedic. The story is similar, however what changes it is its huge focus on gender integration. It definitely brings in a more interesting take to this type of story. It brings in more possibilities with how it can be executed. As each chapter ends, the tensions will rise as many students will slowly lean into Masaya's side and believe that gender integration is the way to go. The story gets much more interesting and intense as we get into the beginning of the roots. It leads you to wonder what will happen in this route. It's also cool that the visual novel makes you experience a full year of school without rushing through it. It takes its time to experience it, so it's nice to see a visual novel take it slowly with its story in order to get a sort of realistic experience. Once again, it's your standard visual novel with the usual gameplay, clicking to continue the story and making choices along the way. Now to get to a specific route, it's very simple. Like, extremely simple. I'm not kidding. Just choose your specific girl. If you want to go for, let's say, oh I don't know, uh, Rise's route, you mainly choose the choices that are based about Rise. Once you make your character specific choices, you'll head into their route. It's that simple. The writing is extremely good. Much of it is a mix between sweet romance, heartwarming and genuine kindness, and dramatic yet intense drama. The English translation is done by Manga Gamer, and it was done very well. And like I said, much of the writing is a great blend of not only great romance and dramatic yet emotional drama, but genuine heartfelt emotions, and surprisingly, a lot of religious references since the school is not only an all-girls school, but a Christian school as well. 
Another cool thing is that the entire visual novel is fully voice acted. And once again, the voice acting is freaking amazing. Each VA gave it their all with their roles, with Ritsuko and Risei having the most standout performances. Here, take a listen to the voice acting. ごきげんよう。やっぱり私の解説を聞きたくなったのかしら星座について。また二人きりになっちゃったわね。あれなんて私たち幼馴染なんだし。ねえ、あんたさ、なんで嘘ついたの金づちってなってますよ。小学校の
This route goes in a different direction than Risei's and Chiho's routes, but still tries to follow the main story. Ritsuko is a part of the Red Roses, who are the rival team of the White Lilies, Risei's and Masaya's team. But as she soon hangs out more with Masaya, she comes to a shocking realization. She's slowly having feelings for Masaya, leading to some hilarious moments. But as the two continue to speak with each other, their love for each other will grow more and more, and as the two will soon become a couple, they will then realize that not only that their relationship will affect the plan for gender integration, but will also create an enemy that not only wants to destroy their relationship, but force Ritsuko to marry someone who she doesn't love. That enemy being the headmistress. Finally, we have Ayaka's route. Same thing like Ritsuko's route, as it goes in a different direction but still tries to follow the main story. Ayaka is Ritsuko's older sister. She's a much more outgoing and fun person rather than her calm, younger sister. However, while she does join Masaya in the White Lilies, she's not heavily invested in gender integration as she's graduating this year. But one thing is for sure though, she's very interested in Masaya. But after a close sexual encounter that would have been a huge disaster, Masaya evaluates whether he should be in a relationship with Ayaka, and soon he responds to his true feelings for her and then they become a couple. But as they continue to love for each other, Ayaka will soon learn more about her past and will come across a shocking discovery that will not only change her view of her wife, but also the life of the headmistress. Each route is executed in a very well-mannered way, again detailing the situation each specific heroine is going through right now. Honestly, the only problem a few readers will likely encounter is the inconsistency with its tone. Like I said before, the music changes pretty quickly in some scenes, so the tone in those specific scenes will change rapidly. We go from a really romantic and cute scene to a serious or intense scene. It gets a bit inconsistent at times, but I'm sure readers won't find that as a big issue. But besides that tiny problem, basically the entire visual novel is an extremely enjoyable experience. Each group will give off both a romantic yet emotional experience for readers and the way they were able to execute the drama was honestly fantastic. It showcases memories of childhood mistakes that could hit home for many readers, as well as personal family problems. It doesn't shy away from leaning towards some serious topics. I'll admit though that the drama can be a bit over the top in a lot of the scenes, but it'll at least still keep you entertained. But the drama is genuinely pretty good, well for me that is. It didn't feel unnecessary to be honest. It made sense as to why it had to happen kind of the reason why I was interested in it in the first place. Masaya is such a great main character. He's a boy who simply wants to live a good life, only for it to be ruined because of a choice he made when he was young. Now living in a poor wife with his good for nothing father who leaves him with a huge amount of debt, but with the help of Risei, he's able to make things right, giving him a second chance of having a good life. But not only that, he genuinely wants to help with saving Vincennes by adding gender integration and showing the students why it's important. And depending on which route you take, you can see how much he cares about the specific heroine he dates, and he'll go above and beyond by trying to help her get through their problem. He cares and genuinely loves them. He doesn't want them to end up in the same situation he was in before, living in a horrible life. He doesn't try to be a pervert. He really wants to fit in with the students and make friends in the school. So it's nice to see this type of MC in this type of story. He's no Ryosuke from Hoshiori, but he's still a great main character. The romance and comedy are one of the best parts of this visual novel. Again, it's very funny and it's executed in a way where you sometimes won't expect it. Plus the reactions of the heroines can be really cute at a lot of the times. And the romance is extremely heartwarming to see, especially with roots such as Risei's and Ritsuko's. The themes for each route, even in the common route, is executed very well. Risei's route deals with accepting the present and moving on from the past. Chiyo's route deals with the situation of fixing old relationships and family problems. Ritsuko's route deals with the problems of trying to be the ideal daughter for a perfectionist mother. And Ayaka's route deals with accepting others for who they are, even if you don't want to believe it. Much of these routes will genuinely be emotional for some, especially in a personal level. Some can even be shocking, especially in two particular scenes that I won't spoil. Now which was my favorite route? Honestly, both Ritsuko's and Ayaka's roots were my personal favorites. I love Ritsuko's route due to the romance part of it. When she begins to have feelings for Masaya, she was shocked. She never believed she would fall in love with a man like him. So the question she asks herself is, does she deserve to love Masaya? This all leads to a heartwarming tale of two people falling in love with each other. A secret romance, if you would say. The romance between Masaya and Ritsuko is really adorable, and you can feel the genuine love that these two have for each other. Plus the drama for the route, albeit is a bit too dramatic, does lead into a very satisfying ending 
for Ritsuko. Now for Ayaka. I love her route specifically because of the drama. The drama is mostly all about Ayaka and her relationship with her family, specifically the headmistress. The two never gotten along with each other, mostly due to Ayaka's character, so it's mostly been a lot of arguing and shouting. But the drama gets better as soon as we get near the end, where Ayaka soon makes a major discovery about her past, with her father telling her the whole truth, giving a huge shock to Ayaka. Even Masaya wasn't expecting it. And the finale to her group is powerful and emotional, letting us know that it's okay to accept others for who they are, and be grateful that you have them in your life. Princess Evangel received overall generally positive reviews from readers and players alike. Now what do I think about this visual novel? I absolutely enjoyed it. Again, the drama is executed extremely well, and while it can be a bit too dramatic at times, it's still a really enjoyable experience. But the amazing characters, the intriguing story, the comedic and romantic aspects of the novel, and the variety of tones to the music, the clever writing, and the cute yet nice looking art style. I fell in love with all those aspects of this visual novel. It was simply hard not to hate it. With each new chapter, I became intrigued with what would happen next. Personally, for me, I absolutely love this visual novel. It was fun, romantic, wholesome, emotional, and hilarious. I believe this is a visual novel that you should check out. So yeah, that was Princess Even Gil. Um, overall, fantastic visual novel, just simply fantastic. So, not only was it very successful, but we got a sequel. Well, quote unquote sequel. Something similar to like If My Heart Went Swipe Diary and Fine Days from the Sky Full of Stars. However, before we get into that quote unquote sequel, well, take a look at this. It's just a PS Vita, right? Well, then again, you can play PSP games on Homebrew. There exists a PSP version of Princess Evangel. Why is there a PSP version and only a PSP version? I have no idea. This right here is Princess Evangel Portable. Released in April 12, 2012, exclusively in Japan and on the PSP, this is a full-on portable version of Princess Evangel that you can take on the go with the PSP, which is really cool. And that's really it to be honest. This is literally Princess Even Gil on your PSP. But of course without the 18 plus content, which is a shame, but that's how it is. But like I said before, this is a really cool theme to own for your PSP. It's nice to see visual novels get ports, but it does kind of suck that this only came out on the PSP. I think this would have worked fine as well as a PlayStation 3 port. But alas, that never happened. But we still got Princess Even Gil on mobile devices though. But that one is isn't just the same. But still though. This is still a really cool piece to own. So that was Princess Even Gil Portable. It was honestly a really cute thing to see. And, you know, I kind of wish that we did get like a PS3 version, to be honest. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's take a look at the quote unquote sequel to Princess Even Gil. This is Princess Even Gil W Happiness. Released in June 29, 2012, exclusively in Japan and on the PC, this is Princess Evangel W Happiness, a fan disc to the original visual novel, once again developed and published by Moonstone. W Happiness is a collection full of short stories. We have four after story epilogues for the four main girls, but not only that, we also get five side stories for the five main side characters that appeared in the original visual novel, now showcasing what would have happened if Masaya went for them instead. You can also play through the prologue of the original visual novel as well, however you won't be able to experience the four roots as you need the original visual novel for that. Anyways, let's talk about W Happiness. Let's start off with the five standalone stories first. The first story is about Ruriko. 
Her story is about her trying to find Panterbell, her furry little friend, so she enlists Masaya to help her find them and also ask him where Panterbell could have run off to. And as they head off to try to find Panterbell, they'll soon grow closer together and become a romantic couple. The second story is about Konomi. Her story deals with Masaya joining and practicing with her at the Nagi Nada Club. He becomes enamored with Konomi as he watches her dignified lessons and through the club activities, the relationship between the two will grow more intense. However, there's one problem. Konomi is clueless when it comes to male-female sexual relationships. The third story is about Mitsuki. Her story deals with her growing feelings for Masaya after he saves Marika, whom she reveres greatly. However, after spending so many years hating men, she has a hard time expressing her feelings causing her nothing but agony. So as summer vacation begins, she'll help Masaya with his homework, where their relationship will soon start to expand as they gradually grow closer. The fourth story is about Tani. Her story revolves around her and Masaya going on an absurd cross-country trip to take photos over her summer vacation. During the trip, the relationship quickly becomes hot and heavy. And when they get a nice mood going, an unexpected event happens that stops them from accepting them as lovers. The fifth and final standalone story is about Marika. Her story revolves around her falling in love with Masaya after the whole incident in the original visual novel, and her confidence has wavered due to this. Why? Because she can't fall in love with someone while she continues to hide her true self. So as the two continue to know each other more, she'll reveal who she really is and face Masaya head on. Now we move on to the after stories. Let's start off with Reese's after story. Gender integration has been approved and Masa is able to stay at the school. However, for their final year together, they end up in different classes. So they reach out to the chairwoman of the school for a favor. She agrees in exchange for one job. Next is Ritsuko's after story. Masaya learns some very interesting news but feels rather conflicted about it. While Ritsuko does her best to support Masaya from the sidelines, even trying new methods in order to cheer him up, her encouragement certainly perks him up, in all sorts of ways. Next is Chiho's after story. It's Chiho's final summer at the school and as a member of the track club, she wants to end off her time at school by going to the nationals and devotes herself to practice. However, as she continues to stress out, Masaya grows worried for her and hears her out. And as he does, he finds the reason to be truly unexpected, and yet not at the same time. Finally, we have Ayaka's after story. Ayaka has now graduated but spends her days feeling lonely. So once Golden Week approaches, she decides to take on a part-time job. Seeing Ayaka hard at work makes Masaya see her in a whole new light, as they reunite once again for more romantic antics. Overall, the new standalone stories were great, giving all the side characters we know and love their own route, and being able to step into the light and giving them their time to shine. And I find it really cool that the plots for their standalone stories are all based around their character personality. It all leads to some wholesome moments between the specific heroine and Masaya. Mariko and Marika's stories were really charming to read, Konami's Rube was my least favorite to be honest, mostly because she was my least favorite character in the visual novel, so her Rube was not really for me. Tammy's Rube really surprised me with its story as it was pretty unexpected, but my personal favorite standalone story is Mitsuki's. Mitsuki's story was absolutely perfect. It's a simple love story about a girl who originally hated men, but now her vision changes due to Masaya. Masaya literally changes her character as a whole. It's an extremely wholesome story filled to the brim with cheeky comedy and goodness. And this route was my most anticipated route to read as Mitsuki was one of my favorite characters. And to see her get a route, I wasn't disappointed at all with it. It was perfect. Plus the endings for all those standalone stories really shocked me because the endings for the standalone stories all have a similar finale. Of course I won't tell you here, but just keep in mind because it's pretty interesting. Okay, so the after stories were a mixed bag for me to be honest. Personally, Reese's after story was the most disappointing story. I genuinely thought they were going to give her an actual ending to her route, like a little peek at the future. Sadly, that didn't happen, which is a shame. While I had some cute moments, I was just expecting more from it. Ritsuko's and Ayaka's after stories were on par with each other, giving each of them a definitive end to their stories while also delivering some great romantic moments. However, Chiyo's after story might just be the best after story. Again, it not only continues where it left off from the original visual novel, but it also gave a very good ending to Chiho's route, not only because of its execution, but also what lies in the grand finale to a route, which of course, I won't spoil. 
The art style here, once again, is great. Also, we get some new CGs featuring not only the original heroines, but the side heroines as well. And some of them look amazing. Yes, of course, they added 18 plus scenes for the side heroines as well. That's cool. But we also get some new music as well. Most specifically, we get music for the side heroines as they get their own music themes, which is really cool and definitely fits with their character and personality. And once again, the writing is still great. John was out of the question here as all the stories will focus on the wholesome romance aspect. So you'll only be seeing some cute tongue-in-cheek comedy throughout each story. The standout is the voice acting, especially for the side characters. They did such an amazing job, and same goes for the original heroines, but the side characters did a much better job. However, what I found disappointing were the length of the after stories. Again, I thought they would be a bit longer, something along the lines of If My Art of Wings Flight Diary with their after stories. But that isn't the case as you can finish the after stories in Princess Evangelical W Happiness in less than, let's say like an hour and an hour and a half. But at least the standalone stories are a bit longer, but again, I wish they were more longer. But that's just my preferences. If you like shorter stories, then cool. Either way, this was a really cool fan disc, as it gave all the characters you know and love from the original visual novel more time to shine in the spotlight before their grand goodbye. And I say that this is, was still an enjoyable experience, even with a few flaws. Okay, sorry guys, I can't stop myself from talking about the age scenes in Princess Evangel W Happiness because, woo! Once again, these are some clean age scenes. W Happiness received generally positive reviews once again from readers and players alike. Now what do I think about this fan disc? I think it's a good fan disc. It delivered what it was meant to deliver. Good actor stories and standalone stories. It gave side heroines a chance to shine on stage and showcase their true personality while giving the original heroines their final goodbye. And while the fan disc does have a tiny bit of problems, like the short length of the actor stories and standalone stories, as well as Reese's after story being a bit disappointing for me, I still found it to be a great visual novel to read through. And the standalone stories alone are worth it with Mitsuki's story taking the crown for best story. It not only gave a nice farewell to the characters, but delivered more cute and funny romantic moments for the readers. I would still say that this is a visual novel that is worth the read, but however, I do recommend you read the original visual novel first before you read this one. And so, we took a look at the complete story of Princess Evangel. Overall, this series was fantastic. It not only had great characters, good music, well-developed roots, and overall a really nice art style. It was just very well executed. And the same thing goes with the bandits. It had so many other roots that gave side characters, so many side characters like their own time to shine. And it was just a good way for them to get more, I guess, more development. And remember, Mitsuki, oh, best roots. But either way, is this worth a purchase? Is this worth getting both the original visual novel and the bandits? Of course! This is something that you should play at least once. Just give it a try, and I'm sure that you'll enjoy it. So, that's all I got to say. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys later.